The story unfolds with a high-stakes rescue mission gone awry. The central character is a dedicated military man tasked with rescuing a prominent professor. Unfortunately, their mission takes an unexpected turn when they find themselves trapped, victims of inaccurate intelligence. Their adversaries seem to have a perfect understanding of their movements and launch a well-coordinated attack. As time passes, a mysterious figure approaches the scene, swiftly incapacitating Sergeant Kim. The Major inquires about the whereabouts of the other troops, but the newcomer remains clueless, suspecting they've been taken elsewhere. Another man emerges and asks him if he is Major Kong Ham Chan, the person sent to rescue them. He instructs Kong Ham to gather the remaining prisoners and follow him. The situation becomes even more enigmatic as Kong Ham attempts to ascertain the details of their mission or the size of their team to be met with silence. Suddenly, three enemy combatants appear, and Kong Ham assumes a stealthy approach is impossible. However, the rescuer takes the initiative, launching a surprise attack and swiftly dispatching two of the foes without firing a single shot. This astonishing feat leaves Kong Ham in awe, and the rescuer vows to eliminate any future threats quietly, reserving firearm use for emergencies only. Kong Ham realizes that the rescuer's skills are beyond typical military training, making him a true enigma. After eliminating the adversaries, the rescuer informs them that they will wait for one minute for the professor and Sergeant Kim, demonstrating a calculated approach rather than reckless haste. Kong Hom attempts to discern the rescuer's nationality, but receives no response. Upon exiting the location, they encounter other members of their platoon who had been relocated. These soldiers credit the rescuer for their rescue and direct Kong Hom and his team to continue southwest, where allies await. Kong Hom recognizes the rescuer as a mercenary and expresses his gratitude for saving their lives. Suddenly, an explosion rocks the surroundings, prompting everyone to take cover. As enemies open fire, the rescuer swiftly regains composure and engages in combat. To Kong Ham's astonishment, the rescuer is revealed to be a mere child, raising questions about his true identity and capabilities. Six months later, in a different setting, a new student named Yu Yi Jin introduces himself to a class. Meanwhile, his sister sits in her own classroom, where her peers discuss a striking new student. Little did they expect that her brother, believed to have perished with their parents in a plane crash a decade ago, would resurface. The shocking revelation stirs emotions among her classmates, while her brother, Yu Yijin realizes her presence in the same school. The girls approach her, questing gym clothes. Dion, her sister, hesitates, questioning what she should wear in return. The girls assert that she must comply without retort. Meanwhile, the teacher addresses the students, introducing Yu Yijin and explaining his prolonged absence abroad due to personal reasons. The teacher urges the students to assist Yu Yijin in adapting to his new life. Yijin, still adjusting to his new life in Korea, recalls Kang Ham's advice not to engage in fights while living in the country. With 10 years of battlefield experience, he knows better than to underestimate the potential consequences of violence. The teacher, sensing the need for support, assigns Park Yongchan to take care of him since they sit next to each other in class. Yongchan informs him about two individuals, Jia Yong and Hyok Jin Ju, advising him to exercise caution around them. As the math teacher enters the classroom and begins teaching, Eugene observes that the country is peaceful, compared to his previous experiences. After school, Dion approaches him, and he suggests they walk home together. During their conversation, he explains that he was only nine years old during the accident and barely remembers her and their grandfather. She confirms his identity when questioned by a classmate, revealing him as her brother. However, a boy approaches Yi Jin and starts bullying him. Yi Jin wonders why the boy is so confident despite lacking a weapon and being defenseless. He recalls Kong Ham's advice not to fight and decides to leave the situation alone. Dion apologizes on his behalf, explaining that he's still adjusting to the culture after living abroad for so long. However, when the boy doesn't back down, Yi Jin breaks his promise to Major Kong by punching the aggressor, defending himself. Yi Jin then turns to Dion, asking her to stand still for a moment. He swiftly takes down the boy, who falls to the ground. On his very first day, he has already strayed from the advice he received. Meanwhile, Kong Ham reflects on Yi Jin's difficult upbringing in a challenging environment since the age of nine. He hopes that Yi Jin can successfully adapt to school life, despite the challenges he's already encountered. As the day unfolds, Yi Jin finds himself in more altercations with other students. He fights back, determined to stand his ground. Afterward, he and Dayan leave the school together, leaving a girl in shock at the confrontation she witnessed. Dayan explains to Yi Jin that it's considered rude to glare at people in this country, and such actions can provoke reactions like the one they just experienced. Back at home, Yi Jin takes on the task of doing the dishes, 
While his grandfather inquires about his first day at school, he reassures his grandfather that there were no major issues, but his thoughts drift back to the tragic incident in which his parents lost their lives. The following morning, Jin discovers that his grandfather has prepared an abundance of dishes for his breakfast, a gesture of care and support. Meanwhile, Dayeon's bully, Huijin, learns about Ijin's presence and begins the torment. She approaches Dayeon, urging her to come with her. Huijin begins to verbally bully her, while also slapping her across the cheek. Dayeon, in a panic, runs away to help her brother after learning that the other boys are going to jump him. Meanwhile, in the boys' classroom that Ijin had previously defended himself against, a group of boys he had beaten up returns. To their surprise, they have brought Huijin's brother, Kim Gisu, with them. Dayeon also arrives, and Ijin notices her disheveled appearance and dirty clothes. Ijin inquires if Kim Gisu is indeed the person standing before him, and Kim Gisu confirms his identity. As the thugs move in to attack, Ijin shows off his skills. However, the group is stunned when Ijin swiftly defeats them in a physical altercation. Ijin reprimands them for their mistreatment of his sister, Dayeon. Kim Gisu proceeds to attack Ijin, but the latter skillfully blocks his attacks and retaliates with a punch defeating all of them. The classmates who witness this remarkable display of fighting skills are left in shock, turning his attention to Hui Jin. Hui Jin is about to confront her when Dayeon intervenes, preventing any further escalation. Hui Jin questions Hui Jin, asking if she was the one who injured Hui Jin. Dayeon is astonished at how he found out, and Hui Jin responds by suggesting he will accompany her to her next class. In the background, Hui Jin thinks that Kim Gisu and his gang are a bunch of morons. Returning to his own classroom, Jin earns admiration from his classmates for his formidable fighting abilities. However, back in Kim Gisu's gang, there is frustration and anger over their embarrassing defeat. Hui Jin, on the other hand, feels humiliated in front of her entire class. She becomes envious of Dayeon and realizes that her school life may improve now that she has her brother to protect her. In Hui Jin's mind, she imagines being able to cry to her brother whenever something goes wrong. Dion remains silent, deep in thought. Dion reflects on the situation, acknowledging that she can now go to school without fear of being bullied. Eugene approaches her and inquires about her thoughts. She asks him to go to the store and purchase some items explaining that their grandfather becomes quite hungry when he returns home from work. At the store, Dayan and Ijin attract attention from everyone around them. Dayan realizes that it's not just at school. Everyone is talking about how cool her brother is becoming. That night, their grandfather surprises Ijin with a new mobile phone. He spends the evening using the phone and texts Kong Ham to inform him that he'll be using this number from now on. Kong Ham becomes annoyed because he had recently purchased a new phone for Ijin. The following morning, as Ijin steps outside, he notices that Dayan is leaving early. Early, hurrying as if she'll barely make it on time. Suddenly, a group of girls attacks her, bullying and slapping her. Dion recognizes one of the girls as Hui Jin. The girls continue their assault, leaving Dion battered. A concerned man urges her to call the police, but Dion insists that she is fine. After some time, when the teacher asks the class about Dion, the students inform her that she is absent for the day. After school, Eugene anxiously waits for Dion, but when she doesn't arrive after a long while, he decides to call her. Meanwhile, Dion is lying on her bed at home, injured. Eugene eventually goes to Dion's room and provides her with first aid. She explains that she fell down the stairs while trying to avoid a bike. Eugene insists that she should go to the hospital, but Dion refuses, fearing that a hospital visit might reveal that she didn't actually fall down the stairs. She realizes that she lacks the evidence this time, and she's even more concerned about how their grandfather would react to the truth. Meanwhile, Kim Gisu is sitting at a club. Everyone is discussing his recent confrontation with the new student. His sister calls him and informs him about Dion's situation, mentioning that she was beaten up, appreciates her for handling the situation well. Suddenly, someone enters the club. Gisu recognizes him, approaches the group, and starts attacking Gisu's friends. While Hui Jin is still on the call, Trying to understand what's happening, Gisu turns toward him and warns him not to mess with his sister. Ijin questions why Hu's sister, Dayeon, is being targeted. When Gisu tries to attack with a bottle, Ijin skillfully dodges the blow and counterattacks. Gisu is shocked that Ijin can defend himself so effectively. Ijin grabs Gisu by the neck and forces him to the ground giving him a stern warning. He threatens to come after them if they continue mistreating Dayeon and asks Hui Jin to control his sister. He then leaves them behind, leaving Hui Jin bewildered. Hui Jin wonders why Gisu ended the call, and suddenly he sees Yi Jin coming out of the club. She pleads with him not to come closer, but ends up falling on her own. Jin chooses to leave them without saying a word. And when Hui Jin enters the club, she finds all of them lying on the ground, defeated. Hui Jin continues to berate her friends, who are still reeling from their encounter with Yi Jin. Kim Gisu, however, intervenes, warning them not to harm his sister. He firmly states that if anyone lays a hand on her, he'll personally deal with them. His presence instills fear in the group. Kim Gisu makes it clear that he won't tolerate any harm coming to Dayan in fear of Yi Jin. Meanwhile, Yi Jin is called by his grandfather, 
who is concerned about Dion's injury. He doesn't believe her story about falling down the stairs and is saddened that she didn't confide in him about what really happened. Eugene assures Grandpa that he will watch over Dion at school, easing Grandpa's worries. Grandpa, on the other hand, is overjoyed that Eugene has returned. The following day, Gisu's mother holds Eugene responsible for her son's injuries, stating that they will take action soon. She also mentions that Eugene injured her arm. Kim Gisu questions his mother about why she reported the incident to their parents. She explains that Eugene hurt her arm, and since it's a Saturday, she couldn't wait until Monday to address the matter. Eugene is elated, believing that the transfer student will face punishment. Gisu's mother contacts the chief requesting immediate intervention. Meanwhile, Eugene sits in his room when he hears voices outside. Several men have arrived at his home, inquiring about him. Eugene informs his grandfather that they are acquaintances and that he will chat with them briefly. They escort him to their boss, who orders them to attack Eugene. However, Eugene skillfully defeats them, surprising the chief with his combat abilities. It becomes evident that Eugene has substantial real combat experience. The chief questions Eugene's identity doubting that he's just a normal high school student. Despite the chief's repeated attacks, Jin evades and counters each one. The chief is astonished that he cannot land a single blow and inquires about Ijin's identity. Ijin maintains that he is a high school student. Ijin continues to block and evade the chief's attacks, eventually countering and defeating him decisively. The chief is left in shock, acknowledging that he and Huijin's parents had messed with the wrong person. Meanwhile, Kim Gisu's parents are growing increasingly concerned about their children's welfare. After some time, they receive a call. Kim Gisu's mother asks her husband to put it on speaker. The chief informs them that their children tangled with the wrong individual and that he himself had been beat. A sudden sound from outside alerts them to the arrival of Ijin. Ijin enters the scene, swiftly taking down the guards. The father realizes that Ijin has already arrived and wonders about the identity of this mysterious and formidable individual. Meanwhile, Kim Gisu's father questions how Yi Jin managed to get inside. Their mother is considering reporting the incident to the police. However, Yi Jin surprises them by showing a video clip of Hu Jin bullying Dayan and demanding money. Hu Jin attempts to explain, but her father sternly tells her to be silent. Yi Jin reveals that he has more evidence against Gisu and Hu Jin as well. Moreover, he explains that the two had often filmed themselves bullying others stealing and even physically harming his sister. Eugene clarifies that he confronted Gisu and Hu Jin because they had ganged up on his sister and he had to protect her. Their father offers Eugene money and hospital expenses, but Eugene declines, emphasizing that his main demand is for Gisu and Hu Jin to stay away from his sister permanently. Their father agrees to send them overseas, and Eugene insists that they be gone by the following day. He also demands that they hand over all the footage he possesses. Eugene makes it clear that he is not easily fooled. Upon returning home, Eugene reassures Grandpa and Dion that he is fine. He tells Dion that she won't be falling down the stairs anymore, expressing his determination to protect her. The next morning, when Dion enters the classroom, she overhears students discussing Hui Jin's absence from school. Dion is shocked when she realizes that this is likely the result of her brother's actions. Hui Jin's friends are also in disbelief that she's leaving the school, and they can't reach her. They wonder if her situation has anything to do with Yi Jin. Later, Hui Jin appears and clarifies that she's only leaving for one semester. She also mentions that she asked her mom to get their grandpa out of his job. Hui Jin notices Yi Jin's presence, Fear washes over her. Ijin notes that everyone from the video is present in the classroom, and he reveals that this is the same place where they had filmed Dayan. The shock among the students is palpable as they realize that he had been waiting for them to gather there. Eugene plays music and closes the door, creating an atmosphere of tension and anticipation. Meanwhile, Hui Jin's parents are awaiting her return when their guard rushes to inform them about the news. The newscaster is revealing the videos that have been exposed, along with the revelation that the attackers are the children of Congressman Kim. The chief questions Eugene's motives, as he had previously struck a deal with the congressman. Eugene cryptically responds that it's because he has a twisted personality. The news anchor continues with the shocking revelations, exposing Congressman Kim's involvement in voting fraud money laundering and solicitation. The evidence presented is deemed highly reliable, even prompting members of his own political party to demand a thorough investigation. Yi Jin had obtained this evidence from the chief's home, as it had been kept in case of a dispute with the congressman. The next day at school, students try to engage Yi Jin in conversation. Young Chan approaches him, asking about his schedule for the day and suggesting they hang out after school. Yi Jin agrees to the plan. Shortly afterward, Jia Hyung and Hyeok Jin approach Yi Jin, 
inquiring if he was responsible for Gisu and Hui Jin's sudden departure. Hui Jin firmly denies any involvement, stating that he had nothing to do with it. They extend an offer to celebrate their disappearance and even suggest forming a band together. Hui Jin declines, mentioning his prior plans to hang out with Yong Chan. They propose playing together, and Yong Chan believes they won't bully him in Hui Jin's presence. The teacher enters the classroom with new students. Yong Chan recognizes one of them as Yona the granddaughter of the owner of SW, the country's largest corporation. Next to her is Ko Siokju, her designated secretary and bodyguard. The teacher explains that they've returned from studying in America for two years and will be joining their class. Yona asks Siokju about Ijin. He has no information about him. However, he promises to check the data and provide an update. Yona questions him, but he remains unfazed. Later, Siokju informs Yona about Ijin, revealing that he is Dayan's older brother and arrived at school before they did. However, Yona still appears perturbed by Ijin's presence. After school, Ijin joins Yongchan and goes to the PC club. Yongchan inquires about Ijin's rank, and when he learns that he's a challenger, he's taken aback. Meanwhile, Ijin is unable to comprehend their technical discussions. On his way home, he crosses paths with Dayan in the street, who's buying snacks from the store. She asks if he's hungry. He mentions that he already had dinner with his friends. Later that evening, he joins them for dinner. Afterward, he receives a call from Kang Ham, who inquires about any problems in his school life. Eugene informs Kang Ham about Gisu's family issue, but assures him that it's been resolved. The following day, Yi Han, Hyok Jin, and Yong Chan discuss Yi Jin. Jai Hyong asks who would win in a fight between Yi Jin and Siok Ju. Hyok Jin asserts that Hui Jin wouldn't stand a chance against Siok Ju because he's a professional. As Yi Jin and Siok Ju cross paths, Siok Ju questions Yi Jin's identity suspecting that he might be pretending to be someone he's not. Seok Ju, still suspicious of Yi Jin, asserts that there has never been a student like him at the school he claimed to have Dayan reveals that they were informed six months ago that he is alive, but Yona questions why he didn't contact them if he was indeed alive, explains that they were told he lost his memories, and that his memories have only started returning recently. Yona asks if Dayan truly believes he is her brother, to which Dayan responds that they've done a DNA test, to confirm his identity. She then probes further, asking if he has a girlfriend. Meanwhile, Siokju approaches Ijin, questions the purpose behind forging his documents and enrolling in the school. Ijin counters by asking where Siokju's evidence is to prove that he never attended the school he claimed. Siokju had learned through word of mouth that Ijin never attended that school, but he lacks physical evidence to support this claim. Siokju believes it will take a few days to locate Ijin's documents and use them as evidence. Ijin finds it intriguing that they managed to uncover so much information about him in just one day after transferring. Siokju informs Yona that he investigated Dayun and discovered that she had been severely bullied by Gisu and Hui Jin for the past two years. This revelation explains why Ijin took action against them. Yona then asks about the insurance money from the plane crash. Gisu reveals that Grandpa received it and didn't touch it, allowing it to grow substantially. However, he also mentions that Grandpa returned Ijin's share as soon as Ijin returned alive. Yona expresses concern for Dayan as they live in the same house. Dayan inquires about what Ijin did after the plane crash. Ijin reveals that he suffered from severe psychological trauma, making it challenging for him to function. Living in an environment where he couldn't understand anyone took a toll on him. Dayan shares her conversation with Yona, mentioning her inquiry about Ijin's girlfriend. Back at home, a cake and a gift are prepared for Grandpa. Meanwhile, Dayan receives a call from Yona and decides to take it at a store. Ijin wonders why they are investigating a transfer student and then informs Grandpa that he's going to take Dayan home. Yona receives concrete evidence from the school, confirming that there was never a student named Ijin who lived in the house he had listed as his address. Yona grapples with the dilemma of whether to tell Dayan everything about her brother, Ijin. She's excited about the prospect of reuniting Dayan with her long-lost sibling, but is also hesitant to potentially break her heart with unexpected information. Meanwhile, Ijin heads to the store where he encounters Siokju and is asked to wait outside. Suddenly, a high-speed car appears and collides with both of them, sending them crashing to the ground. As they recover from the impact, they realize that the car's drivers are attempting to kidnap both Dayan and Yona. Ijin chases after the kidnappers, but they manage to seize the girls. A scuffle breaks out, but they soon realize that the kidnapper is someone else entirely. Seokju advises Ijin to stay with him while they figure out what happened. However, Ijin is determined to find his sister on his own. He heads directly to the chief, whom Seokju recognizes as a figure respected in the underworld. 
Eugene explains that the granddaughter of the SW Group CEO has been kidnapped and asks for information. The chief vehemently denies involvement in the kidnapping, provides Eugene with some crucial details. He mentions that some people who weren't fluent in Korean had asked his men about a warehouse location, quested a significant number of cars. Despite offering a substantial sum of money, the chief refused to cooperate. The chief hands Eugene his phone and asks him to input his number, intending to help if his men discover the warehouse's location or any other pertinent information. Jin also inquires about the motorbike at the entrance and takes it, while Seokju remains puzzled about Ijin's identity. On the other hand, Dayeon and Yona find themselves tied up in an undisclosed location. The kidnappers instruct them to sit quietly, assuring them that it will all be over soon. Yona speculates that they may be trying to leverage her to gain something from SW or her grandfather. However, the kidnapper inquires about Dayeon, indicating that they only brought her because she was with Yona. He deems Dayeon as useless and suggests disposing of her. Yona, determined to protect Dayeon, threatens to cut her own tongue and commit suicide if they harm her. The kidnapper callously challenges her to go ahead and desperate move, Yona actually cuts her tongue, and the kidnapper agrees to release Dion. He orders his men to silence them by covering their mouths to prevent any further outcry. Meanwhile, Ijin and Seokju arrive at the location provided by the chief, where they encounter a significant number of men. Ijin swiftly takes them all out with a single attack, leaving Seokju astounded by his combat skills. Seokju persists in his questions seeking to uncover Ijin's true identity. Ijin decides to simply reply to Seokju's persistent questions by saying that he is his classmate, keeping his true identity a secret. On the other side of the situation, Yona's grandfather receives demands from the kidnappers, who insist on canceling the recently settled business venture. They threaten to kill Yona within one hour if their demands are not met, and an escort team is expected to arrive at the location in about 50 minutes. Meanwhile, Ijin continues to eliminate the kidnappers one by one. He has already taken down 14 individuals and questions Seokju about who is responsible for this operation. Seokju reveals that there have been numerous attempts like this in the past, and Ijin suspects that the true culprits are connected to Yona. They decide to split up, believing that the kidnappers may have heard the commotion. Seokju calls Ijin, expressing his intention to apologize properly once this ordeal is over. The kidnappers, hearing some noise outside, spot Ijin but underestimate him, mistaking him for a child rather than Seokju. Meanwhile, Seokju manages to locate Yona and Dayeon, unties them, and updates Yona about the imminent arrival of the escort team. As the kidnappers approach, they recognize Seokju and confront him. One of the kidnappers attacks Seokju, but his fighting skills are far superior to the previous goons. Despite his wounds, Seokju manages to defeat his attacker. However, the leader reveals that the daggers they're using are not ordinary, as the wounds are deep and immobilizing. The leader then turns his attention to Dion and attempts to attack her with the dagger. Seokju steps in to protect her and gets injured in the process. He instructs his subordinates to leave Yona and kill the other two. Just as the situation becomes increasingly dire, Eugene arrives at the scene and the kidnapper questions his identity. Eugene quickly disposes of the leader with a knife and comes to his sister's aid, calls out to Dion urging her to open her eyes. Dion is relieved to see Eugene and asks him if he's okay. Get ready for comment of the day. He reassures her and takes her to the hospital, concerned about the psychological trauma she may be experiencing. Eugene later asks Dion about what the doctor said regarding her condition. As she reassures him that there is nothing to worry about, the doctor had only advised her to come once a week for her checkups. Thoughts begin to drift. She recalls the recent encounter with the kidnappers and how Ijin defeated them all. It leaves her wondering how someone like him could be so skilled in combat. In the midst of her contemplation, Yona suddenly appears, concerned about her well-being, apologizes profusely, and Dion chimes in, acknowledging that she too had been a victim of recent events. This prompts her to inquire about Seokju, and to her relief, Yona reveals that he is also a at the same hospital. Dayeon then asks if Ijin could visit Seokju. Without hesitation, they make their way to his room. Upon entering the room, Dayeon feels compelled to apologize to Seokju as he is injured due to their earlier involvement. Ijin, on the other hand, keenly observes Yona's guard, who seems to be continuously eyeing him. After some time, they bid farewell to Seokju and Yona and leave the hospital premises. As they head back home, the guard inquires about Ijin expressing skepticism regarding his role in taking down the kidnappers. What astounds him the most is that Ijin refrained from killing them, opting instead to incapacitate or knock them unconscious. This leads him to speculate that Ijin is a highly trained professional with extensive combat experience. During their journey, Dion expresses gratitude towards Ijin, but Ijin humbly insists that he should be the one thanking her. It dawns on him that for the first time, someone cared about his well-being before their own safety, a newfound understanding of what it means to have a family. Meanwhile, Yona's sister gets wind of Eugene's involvement and the fact that their grandpa is taking an interest in the matter. On the other hand, 
Eugene is engrossed in his exercise routine when Dion calls him, urging him to eat some fruits. Shortly after, he receives a call from Yona, inquiring about his health. Later, Yona had invited him to a restaurant to apologize for involving Dion in dangerous situations. She also mentioned that Seokju would apologize once he recovers and expressed her gratitude for saving her life. Eugene chimes in, asserting that his primary intention had been to save Dion, Yona. Moreover, she assures him that she will no longer investigate him. She asks if he has some free time as her grandpa wishes to meet him and personally extend his gratitude. However, Eugene declines, stating that he never intended to save her in the first place and has no need for their thanks. On his way out, Eugene encounters encounters the chief's subordinate, who informs him that the chief's life is now in danger due to his earlier assistance. They warn him about the numerous men gathered at the chief's location. At the club, the thugs question him about his involvement with the congressman and his decision to aid Ijin, leaving the chief in a precarious situation. As one of the attackers lunges at the chief, he effortlessly subdues him, but another assailant strikes him from behind, causing him to bleed. The group attacking him continues to grow in numbers a disproportionate response given the circumstances. On the opposite side, Eugene arrives to lend his support. He takes on the group with sheer force, skillfully incapacitating them one by one. As he proceeds further into the confrontation, more adversaries emerge, attempting to overwhelm him. Eugene prevails against all odds. Meanwhile, the chief remains locked in a fierce battle with the people confronting him. Exhausted and nearing his limits, a man implores him to surrender, but the chief staunchly refuses, determined to fight to the end. In the midst of this chaos, Eugene arrives on the scene, catching the chief by surprise. Puzzled by Eugene's presence, the chief questions why he's there. In a somewhat unexpected response, Eugene explains that he has come to return his motorcycle. Eugene then intervenes, demanding that the attackers leave the chief alone. Ignoring his plea, they launch an assault on Eugene. To their dismay, Eugene effortlessly dispatches all of them leaving their leader in a state of shock. Thug leader realizes that even he cannot handle this formidable newcomer. He orders his remaining henchmen to kill Yi Jin, and they swarm him in unison. However, Yi Jin continues to overpower them. Meanwhile, the chief seizes the opportunity to confront their leader. As Yi Jin successfully defeats all of his assailants, the chief can't help but regard him as a true monster. Yi Jin asserts that he has now repaid his debt to the chief. The chief inquires about his sister, and Yi Jin reassures him that he saved her life. In a hospital room, the chief's subordinate regards gains consciousness and urgently calls for his boss. The chief is sitting beside him and explains that he was hurt in the attack, which led to his hospitalization. The subordinate inquires about the visit to Eugene and the ensuing commotion. The chief nonchalantly reveals that after being attacked, Eugene had knocked him unconscious and sent him to the hospital. On a different note, Eugene finds himself playing football with some friends, but he unexpectedly catches the ball instead of kicking it. Ja Hyung and Hyok Jin call him out, wondering why he didn't use his feet. Eugene apologizes and expresses his intention to join them at the PC club later. After walking her sister home, Diane encounters her classmates, who inquire about her brother's girlfriend. She simply replies that he doesn't have one. After school, she heads outside where Eugene is waiting for her. His friends suggest he join them after taking his sister home, but Diane assures them that she's perfectly fine and encourages him to go ahead. As they make their way, they unexpectedly cross paths with Yona's sister, and Dayan fails to recognize her. She questions Dayan if she was the poor child who was dragged into the situation with Yona, leaving Dayan puzzled as she tries to understand who she is. Yona's cousin introduces herself as Yona's cousin and expresses her gratitude for saving Yona's life. She extends an invitation to dinner as a way of saying thanks. Eugene, however, declines the offer, insisting that they are fine and there's no need for it. The cousin then reveals that she has a question for Eugene. He abruptly leaves making it clear that he's not interested. She can't help but notice his annoyance, evident even in front of her. At the PC cafe, an altercation ensues when a man is struck, and he retaliates. Jai Hyung arrives on the scene and intervenes, persuading the man to leave without further confrontation. Yong Chan is left in a state of shock, surprised by Jai Hyung's assistance. They return to their game, thinking the situation has been defused. However, the man returns with his friends, ready to escalate the conflict. He gestures for them to follow him outside, leaving Yong Chan anxious, fearing that the situation has gotten out of control because of him. As they prepare to confront the group, Jia Hyung reassures Yong Chan, reminding him that he was not at fault. The fight begins, with the two friends skillfully taking down their opponents. Yong Chan, who has never been in a fight before, is unsure of what to do. Hyok Jin also joins the fray and instructs Yong Chan to stay in the back for safety. Jia Hyung marvels at how these assailants keep getting back up like zombies. Even after being taken down, just as one of them is about to strike Jia Hyung, Yong Chan intervenes, 
restraining the attacker. Ja Hyung arrives and helps take down the aggressive individual. Hyok Jin teases Ja Hyung for needing assistance from Yong Chan. Meanwhile, Lee Jean reaches the cafe and calls everyone. They are unresponsive. After some time, they finally appear. Ja Hyung remarks that he missed quite a show. When they step outside, they find numerous injured men lying on the ground. Lee Jin reveals that he was looking for them when the attacker suddenly targeted him upon seeing his uniform. Later, they gather for a meal and Lee Jin asks them how the fight started. As they recount the incident, Lee Jin checks if Yong Chan is injured, to which he replies that Ja Hyung helped him. Yong Chan admits that he used to dislike both Hyok Jin and Ja Hyung because they often teased their classmates. He clarifies that they didn't bully them, but used to joke around. And Yong Chan points out that regardless of the intention, it still qualifies as bullying. Hyok Jin and Ja Hyung apologize to Yong Chan for their behavior. In another setting, Yona pays a visit to her cousin's room and inquires about why she was investigating Lee Jin. The cousin explains that she found Lee Jin suspicious, prompting her to call some higher-ups for further investigation. She reveals that she received a call. They put it on speaker. An informant relays the message that they have received an order from higher-ups for the SW group to cease any further investigation into Lee Jin. Furthermore, it becomes clear that Lee Jin is not a concern for the SW group. He had separated from his family in a plane crash, and all he desires is to be reunited with them. He's simply a young man, yearning to be back home with his family.